I'm live. It says I'm live. Hey, everybody. Let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me. We're doing it live. Yeah. Live, live, live. Live, 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 live. Let's see in the chat. Lego Mastery, what's up? Joshua White, hello, right back at you. JE2840 54. JE2054. Fourth comment, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe I'll turn the lights back here. It's so bright. I like it. Hey, look at that. Never let the machines win. What's up, Mike? Hopefully you guys can hear me. Hopefully you can see me. Peter Ritchie, what's up? Trebarlo, hello. Hello, my first thought. Hey, well, Carl, that's fantastic. Welcome to the show. This is exciting. Hello. Hello, Mr. Joel Costas Kutras. Hello, hello. Got an early stream for you this time. This should be fun. Hey, Joel, I want this printer. What's up, Aaron F? Hey, I five. Okay. Someone let me know, can you hear me? Can you see me? Like it's standard around here. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Hello, what's up, Matt? What's up, Elmist? The hobby guy, just, the, just all the hobbies. Melodious, can both, yes. Boom, here we go. Fantastic. This is, hey, thanks, hobby guy. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to keep up with the wonderful chat, and I've got it up on a monitor right there. Um, here's the awesome, I, I've done some upgrades. So obviously, um, back here it's nice and bright you know you can see me it illuminates my hair i don't mind it see with it off it's just like dark and and, and moody but let's let's kick it on it's daytime it is daytime also we've got an overhead oh we have an overhead there we go hey everybody i have an overhead and if we turn off the lights there does it affect it maybe we'll keep the lights off we'll be moody moody I don't know, I kind of like them on. Lights on, lights off. What should I do? No iPad this time. That's right. Why is everybody streaming all at the same time? Triple stream. I don't know. I'm streaming when I can. Tripod's Garage, $4.99 to the Adult Frosty Beverage Fund. Yes. Thank you, Tripod. $4.99. Are you out of your mind? Lights off, lights on. Making my Nexus, what's up? That's a hot printer. Not as hot as you, Zombie Hedgehog. Let's, lights off. Okay. Well, we got, you know, we got options. We got options. Lights off. Hello. This is the way. This is the way. All right. Well, let's dig in. What do you say? Coming to you live from the 3D Printing Nerd Studios, probably powered by PCB Way. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. I hope this is a decent machine. The goal is to get it out of the box and see how fast we can get it printing. It should be possible. Here, I'll give you guys uh, an overhead. Ugh, so you can see what I see. There we go. Let's see. And, and da, 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 da. Oh yeah, there we go. Spin it around. I love having an overhead shot. It's been a long time since I've had an overhead shot. Okay, official website. Look at that. There's a QR code for everybody. And do, do, do. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Look at all that wonderful stuff in there. Look at that. Silent pause, this thing has to be pre-assembled. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. I wonder if I can do, huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I'll put it up here. There we go. That's Funzeroni right there. Can we have an update on the Orange Storm Giga? I got one coming. I'll tell you what, let's just, uh, let's just get this one out because everybody, holy crap, everybody's gonna be asking about it. So the Orange Storm Giga, it's literally right there. It's so big, it's so big. I, uh, I 
I did everything proper. Uh, Elegu, I believe, has confirmed that. And I just got an email this morning that they are sending parts for me to fix this. And they're preparing a firmware update. And so that leads me to believe that something was wrong in the initial firmwares and I hit some sort of bug or issue and they're having to fix it thanks to the logs and the data that I provided. So I'm hoping that once the parts arrive and the new firmware arrives, I can get it going. That's my goal. That is my absolute freaking goal. There we go. There we go. Hey, Domenico, just popping in to say, hey, buddy, whilst I'm, Dom is in California proper. I'm telling you he should drive up here. Okay. Let's fill this stuff out. Oh, look at that, I got some chapstick. <laughs> this table's so tall, I can't see anything. USB flash drive included. That's wonderful. I can just take this out. Oh, there we go. So yeah, we got ourselves a nice pre-assembled 3D printer in there. Like I said, I got, oh, here, I'll tell you what. Look at this. Will it focus? Sure will. So I got some, I believe this is glue. Yep, this is build plate glue. Okay, build plate glue. That's what that is. Get all the stuff out. I am so disappointed right now. I am, I am so just not like, not like Orange Giga breaking itself disappointed, but like, <laughs> this is the amount of filament. This, this right here is, is what they're giving you with this 3D printer. This is absurd. Chidi, if you're listening, just don't be like the others and lift yourself up higher and include a full spool of material for someone who buys this 3D printer. A full spool. I think that would be amazing if you did that. Amazing. And I would sing your name from the hilltops. Uh, this is polystyrene, and in my municipality, this is recyclable. So I'm really happy about that part. Oh my goodness, all sorts of stuff everywhere. So if we if we look in there, if we look in there, spicy chapstick. That's right, printer chapstick. Uh, that amount of filament is just evil. Exactly, tripod. Ghost Rock, that's basically useless. I, I kind of have to agree with you on that one. Okay, inside is the, the 3D printer. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do this proper because this table is tall, I'm tall. Let's put it on the ground and then lift and do that. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. It's like a shoulder workout right there. <laughs> what would that small amount even feed? It's, it's essentially enough for a benchy, like uh, JE2854 is saying. I mean, it's, uh, it is, it is a, it is, I don't, I don't consider it a problem like, just make sure there's nothing else in there. I don't, I don't consider it like an issue with the machine, but Chidi as a company, I think, I think could really set themselves apart if they didn't do that and they included that full spool. I think it would be amazing. Look at this. Oh, okay. I got the front towards me. So now you can take a look. Look at that. Uh, Cheaty Tech Q1 Pro. Cedric, I'm not a fan of any filament I got with any of my 3D printers. Isn't this the printer Angus just posted about this morning? Yeah, lots of people reviewed this machine. 
Chidi just sent it along and was like, hey, do you guys want to show it off to your audience? And uh, my producer David and I chatted and we're like, yeah, well, you know, we'll throw it in a live stream. We've got this new setup here and it would be really neat to be able to test it out and get it on a live stream. And they're like, fantastic. Thank you so much. And then I woke up today and it's been reviewed six ways from Sunday. And uh, it's, yeah, so I, I mean, but I need to get out of the box and I want to test it out and I want to show it to you guys. So, you know, no harm, no foul. And of course, it's going to be in Chidi's best interest to get the most amount of views on content possible. And yeah, and Angus, while being a wonderful human, does a good review. So I'm not, I'm not upset about that at all. Not e okay, does it go that way? Is this a square? It is not a square. So just letting you know, this top piece right here goes this way. Sometimes you got to push the corners in a little bit because it doesn't fit perfect. What are you going to do? There's some plastic around the side. There we go. The uh, spool holder goes on. Um, bring it over here. So what you're looking at right here is going to be where that spool holder goes in and uh, go, it goes, it goes like this. It goes like this. Ah, God. <laughs> I am disappointed dad right now because this is not a good decision. This is not, this is not a good decision. Like here's, there's this part and it, and it slots in and you've got a nice spool holder that When you, when you get yourself a 3D printer that's fully enclosed and you want to put it somewhere, typically you talk about the external dimensions of the machine. And uh, it's bigger than that now. Andrew Rogers, holy cats, you snuck in on me. Here's for the frosty beverage front. Andrew Rogers with a 20. That's one, two, three. Four fives. Thank you, Andrew Rogers. Ah, oh, bless your friggin' heart. Pezla's happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you. Pezla is, oh, a member for 15 months. So listen, if you want to become a member here on YouTube, it does help support me and the channel and, and the content that I make. And you're getting a dose of some behind the scenes and backstage stuff as I build out the studio. It's... It's been pretty fun, and it's been cool keeping people updated on that. And if you want to be a part of that, I give it out to the YouTube members. Reedy, this is a competitor to Bamboo? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we will find out. Oh, look at this. I don't, I don't know if this will come in, but... This, this says, lubricate the x-axis regularly. All right. Well, I just want to thank Andrew Rogers and Pezlis for getting, getting me out of my disappointed dad vibe because, I mean, yeah. The front is, um, so this part here, plexiglass or acrylic or something like that. It, it's it's going to be typical for what they uh, usually include, I believe. And then in here, I've got a removable, looks like um, powder-coated PEI, be my guess. It did have a little wrap around it. It is reversible, and it does give 250 by 250 here. So X and Y look to be 250. I would imagine Z or Z is probably similar. That seems to be uh, the going rate for a lot of um, 
uh, build volumes. I'm glad I got this camera because now I can do stuff and you can see me doing stuff. That's, that's kind of fun. Mark Christensen, howdy. Peter! Oh, can't wait to meet Peter at Remurf. Love you, bud. The door is Uncle Jesse proof. <laughs> Big Giano, what's up? Mark Christensen, howdy, y'all. It's been a minute. Do you have any resin printers? Uh, this is the way. Great question. So I do. Um, I've got the Prusa SL1S. Um, it's currently in storage right now just because of the move. I do have one from a company that I'm not allowed to talk about because I'm under NDA, but I get to talk about that in April, and it's going to be fun. And then... I do have some Hay Gears machines. In fact, the episode that's coming out this Friday talks about this innovation that Hay Gears has done with their machines. They call it a pulsing release module, and it introduces a high frequency vibration using air between the FEP sheet and the LCD, which reduces the peel force. And so you don't have to use as much resin and you can go much faster. And I have some really cool models to kind of showcase how they both look the same, but you know these models took less time and less resin. And so that's, that's coming out Friday. That'll be really fun. Tripods Garage, the new Cheaty Filla toaster oven. <laughs> Zachary 3D Prince, hey, what's up, man? Good to see you, I'm doing all right. Hey, Joel, high five from Scandinavian. <laughs> high five, right back to you. Kyle is saying you have to be careful of the chamber heater. The fins are live with mains power and are exposed. So be careful. At least that's what I've heard. That sounds um, awful if true. Exposed mains power? Like that would be a shut down the machine right away sort of thing. Well, that's, I don't like that. I'm scared now. I'm kind of scared. I don't want to take that off. No one needs that. Let's see, how are we on this side? We're good? Okay. It's got some tape on stuff. I'm just gonna... I would assume packing tape isn't a part of a running 3D printer, so that should be removed. It says, take off for the first time for transport clear tape around this waste box when removing it. Well, there you go. For transportation safety, clear tape is used around the waste box. When removing it for the first time, please remove the transparent tape first, then lift up the waste box and take out. Okay. It's a purge bucket. Max Wood, question is, just how acceptable is an all-plastic construction at this price point, considering Creality or Bamboo have metal construction at a not-too-dissimilar price? That is a fair question to have. And I, well, here's the thing. If the Bamboo and the Creality's with the all-metal sides and construction, and the Cheaty Tech with the metal motion parts and the plastic surrounds, if they all perform the same, then whether it's metal or plastic shouldn't matter at this point because the performance is what matters. And if, if you want metal, then obviously that is a personal choice and you should get machines with the metal. But if the plastic performs the same, I don't know if there's really an issue to, to talk about. I don't know. Waste bucket goes back. Oh, it's got a, what, what, all right, a little purge bucket, Let's see if I can get that in there, that just sits there, okay, the hot end, gee, me, Christmas, uh, you're going to have to go overhead for this, <gasps> the hot end is encased in zip ties and cardboard, And Cheaty does not give you the tools to take off the zip ties. Uh, okay. Let's, get, let's, let's have another disappointed dad moment right here. Um, 
Anytime a 3D printer is shipped to anybody, manufacturers need to be able to provide all of the tools necessary in order to get it running. Now, these don't have to be the most expensive, best quality tools. These can be tools that are simple, easy, not expensive, and easy to include with the machine to get it going to the first time. There are zip ties here. Look at these things. Like, like those are those are legit right there on that on that hot end and so being able to take those off you're going to need flush cutters knives aren't really necessarily the best option because you can poke and prod and accidentally cut and scar things that you don't want and so there's no reason a manufacturer should keep from including things like flush cutters no reason um uh Flush cutters are standard. Thanks, Recycle. This whole thing feels like a Debbie Downer. I don't know if it, let's see. I have to, I have to go get my flush cutter. So you're going to get audio only for a second. Um, I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm very disappointed. There's no reason in 2024 a manufacturer can't include some proper things. I don't know where my flush cutters are. I'm going to have to go into another room. So I'm going to give you guys a quick little. <laughs> so there's everything. I'm just going to put this right here. OK, I'm going to go into that room over there. <laughs> I know this is the print farm room. So I mean, I've. I've I've got flush cutters in here. It's just, that's just that camera's not wireless, so I can't take you with me. There we go. Perfect. It's nice in there. I keep it warm. <laughs> flush cutters acquired. Now I can take those nasty little things right off the top of that machine. Let's clear the camera. I appreciate you coming along with me for that ride. That was good times. Andrew Rogers, how do you not include flush cutters? Yes. According to Maker's Muse, uh, it's weird, but kind of okay. Joel, paint your walls bright to brighten up the laboratory. Um, I liked I like the look of, of uh, the the OSB. I like it a lot because I could paint it or I can light it with something. Uh, it just it always looks construction-y and I workshoppy. And I just kind of like it. Man, if it was white, I don't know. Todd Rumbach, bamboo doesn't put cutters in the A1 series. That seems like a misstep, if I'm being honest with you. Well, now that I got the flush cutters and we've had our disappointed father sort of feelings about it, now I can cut these. Okay, wow, they used uh, three of them. That's not bad. Then the cardboard. You need to remove the front cover, lift up from the bottom. Oh, we got flush cutters over, or we got ones over here. Okay. Any others? Any others? I'm looking at you. Any others? <laughs> Chris Goulotta with a fiver for a flush cutter holster so you're always prepared for the random zip tie. Here's what I think I'm going to do. This, um, this post right here, I love this post. <laughs> this is something that holds up the loft area. And there's this giant six by 18 beam that goes across to hold everything up. And I was thinking what I could do, like for flush cutters, put a little holster in the back and just have a line of tools back here that I could reach. And that way, I mean, I've got my, I've got my bench. Like I can, I could put my bench back here, which I probably should. And it has a bunch of tools in it, but just, I want to. I want a way to decorate this, to decorate it. I think it'd be, I could be kind of fun. Dang panda, grr ads. That's YouTube, man. That's not me. 
I, I, I'm sorry. I suppose it's a good time to ask if there are some high quality flush cutters that people use. Um, yeah, yeah. If you watched my video on the K1 Max from Creality, they included the, the probably the best flush cutters I've ever seen included with a 3D printer. In fact, I took separate B-roll just doing this because they're perfect. Um, so if you get a chance after the stream, go back and watch my K1 Max video where I talked about the, uh, the Flowtech hot end from Micro Swiss. And I talked about the flush cutters and I gave them a moment because they're totally worth it. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that quick start guide. What do you say? Here's all the stuff included. Sweet. Take it out of the box. We did that. Uh, remove the power cord from the, and connect it to the printer. Oh. Oh, they're just like power it on, like right away. Follow the on-screen instructions to remove the four ties that fasten the Z at. The four ties, what? What? Okay. Um, here, I'll tell you what, because I'm taking you along for this journey. There are no There are no zip ties. There are screws. Oh, remove screws. Okay. So um, at the very, very bottom, at the very, very bottom, there's some screws to remove. And so I'm going to get that done. Okay. Watch out for that spool holder. They do include, uh, this is the, uh, this is, this is the baggiest stuff that they include right here. Rich C, you probably received a pre-final production model. Um, yeah, yeah. Ding Panda, who's controlling the camera switching? That'd be me. I got a little uh, A10 Mini right here. Not too bad. Uh, the, the upper angle is going to change just slightly. So if you take a look, we are overhead. You can still see my, my belly right here. But I want it to be kind of squared. I want it to be perfect overhead. And I just didn't have the right... Uh, adapter for it today, and uh, I'll get there. I promise. Let's see. Is this going to be the one? That is not. Is it going to be the... Okay, who does this? Who does this? So, these are two, just, just two, three, I'm sorry, three. Three different Allen keys and they, they they're bound together. Can I just slide? Nope, they are taped. This is who does this? Like Will Mar with a seven. Thank you. Dang Panda, this is an ATEM Mini. A T E M Mini. But legit. What what is going on here? It's the Pro, remember. Remember, it's the Pro. The Q1 Pro. Pro usually gives the idea that it is a premium experience. And so far, uh, was it heat shrink? Well, let's take a look. Yeah, that could be heat shrink. Let's keep them together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. J2844. Use the flush cutters to break them apart. Wait, never mind. You guys kill me. I love it. All right, I'm going to take these screws out real quick. I hope you, you all are doing great. What's that angle? See if I can't give you anything more exciting. Boy, that is dark. That is, that is DC dark. Let's see if I can. Nope, not that one. Not that one. There we go. 
Yeah, these screws. So these screws in here, I just got to get a hex on that, and then just like that. So that, I, that's all I'm gonna do. That's all I'm gonna do. Like, that's all I'm gonna do. You don't need to freaking see that, do you? It's so dark in there. It's like DC, DC dark. Yeah, I'll put you back there. Hi. Hi. Just going to take out these screws. Practical printing, did I make it before he breaks it? Chris, you st I didn't. I didn't break anything. Is the outer case metal? No, the outer case is plastic. It's an uh, injection molded piece, right? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. Come on. Ugh. If the A-Net can ship... The A8 with flush cutters, so can Cheaty. I, Johnny Rocco, <laughs> it looks like they sent you a printer that is actually fresh and not pre-tested. If that's the case, then good on them for not pandering you for a good review. I got to hand it to Cheaty. I, I don't think this was pre-tested. I don't think this was cherry-picked. I think this was legit. Legit. Hey, Joel, is the purge bucket installed inside the print bed, and once it's full, you have to grab it. No shoot. Yeah, that's right. So if this is the purge bucket, and it's got these two little notches right here that hang it on stuff, and then, yeah, once it's full, you have to take it out and empty it, and that's just something you have to remember to do. I don't... If it's not multicolor, why do you need a purge bucket? Practical printing with a fiver. That's a fiver. Wait, I'm going to do this. Ready? That's a fiver. <laughs> so, uh, did he make it before he breaks it? Uh, sure. I'm just going to give you that one, Chris. You know I love you, bud. How the poop do you get this back in? It's so DC dark in there. That's, hold on, let me, let me get a light in there because that's kind of interesting. That's, oh, geez, all right. Um, dang it. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. So, if you look right there, there's this edge. There's this edge that you have to slide the bed into, but it's on the front. It's on the front. So if I, well, I'll tell you what, because we're just going to do it here. Oh yeah, we're going big, going big. Go big, go big. There we go. So normally when you put a build plate in, yeah. you have something in the back to set it against. And there's... There's, there's nothing back there. There's nothing. There's a, there's a little ledge to push it against, but then you're supposed to line it up front. And that's, it looks to be a little counterintuitive because if you're trying to line something up front, you're not able to, um, it's already, the magnet has already attached and it makes it kind of difficult to do anything. And so I think that is going to be a source of frustration. I think. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But the problem, because you're, you're having to, you're having to clear it up front, then if it's accidentally resting on one of those edges, you're going to have a bed that isn't properly down <laughs> and you, you lose. It's an interesting choice. I'll do that. It's an interesting choice. Logan, $4.99. Are you out of your mind? Can you start with the back? So you you kind of you you can start in the back. So there is a there is something about that about that long that you can slide it against and then put it down. But it doesn't 
like if you had two notches in the back for little standoffs for it to go against flap down you would be good and it's really really hard to excuse this when this is the q1 pro the pro so it should be a premium experience and that is not look at 4.99 are you out of your mind do you have uh Pads to know why manufacturers refuse to put the filament sensor on the extruder assembly like Prusa does. Patents. It has to, well, part of the reason that some manufacturers put the, uh, the filament sensor away is because it's easier and because it has to do with how long it takes for a 3D printer to do instructions, I believe. Um, it, like, once it detects it's out, some machines can't interrupt the process in order to stop it in time. That's one reason. Uh, another reason is I just don't know. I just don't know. If we go back to the quick start guide, it does say to cut these things, which weren't there. It does say to cut these things, which I did. It does say to unscrew those things, which I did and make sure it's clear of any debris and then about moving platform. It looks like it's just, it's just time to turn it on. And so, I'm gonna get the power cord out and we're just gonna flip and do it. What do you say? Uh, I will, uh, I'll show you something real cool. everybody I uh, I mounted this um, this outlet strip on the front back I don't know it depends on where you're standing part of my uh, bed bed bench I bench so I can just plug in and then bring it right to here and plug in and there's no voltage switch so we're good all right that's handy. That's super handy. Kick the box. I guess it's time to power it on. I'll tell you what, take a moment, get something to drink. Uh, I'm gonna take a sip of my beverage and we're gonna power it on. I'm gonna move this camera a little bit so you can see it. Hmm. Slauncha. Let's move everything over here. Uh, let's put the, the hat back on. We don't want the 3D printer to be without its hat. Hey, look at that. You get to play along with me. And in fact, we'll do that. Neat. Powering on in three, two, one. Booting, please wait. I gotta get my uh, heat shrink out of the way. All right, we're booting. Booting up, please wait. Cheaty tech. It's exciting. Is the chamber heater uncovered? Don't want to burn anything. I think it might have a heat up during initial calibration. The chamber heater on the inside. There's no handle. What? Okay. There is a chamber heater back there. Um, there's kind of a little tiny plastic shield in front of it. go. I just want to make sure you can see the insides. Okay. This isn't so bad. Uh, English. Unboxing. Okay, cut that off. So there's this little video going on showing me what I was supposed to do. Remove all the ties. I believe I did. Double checked it. Sweet. Okay. Remove all four screws. I did that and I showed you those. About to, about to moving platform, please make sure the platform is clean and unlocked. Clean, unlocked, next. Keep pushing the filament in. Now look at this, oh, this is, this is infuriating. What do, you, what do you see right there? What do you see 
right there. What do you see? What do you see? You see a full spool of filament, an absolute full spool of filament. Now, if they in their instructions are going to say load the full spool of filament, then they should include, they should include the full spool of, spool of filament. But alas, I digress. Richard McLean, hello from Las Vegas. Hello. Kind of uns unscrew this. Maybe U.S. Customs removed the spool. <laughs> Be careful around the chamber heater. Vector 3D did a complete teardown, and the heater has full unprotected mains voltage behind the plastic cover. I'm gonna. I've, I've heard this from a couple people, and it is something that I'm going to verify. But if full mains voltage is within an area that I can accidentally touch within this printer, then after this initial test, and if that is verified, then I am not going to use this anymore because having exposed mains voltage, even with a tiny plastic cover, like I'm looking at the cover and if something, I don't like having to make an excuse for saying mains voltage uncovered <laughs> it's pro it's pro pro <laughs> but like uh, this is big jano electrical safety is no joke i 100 percent agree with you and i'm going to go from disappointed dad to mad dad here if that's the case all right, it wants me to keep pushing the filament into the filament runout sensor until it reaches the extruder. So this, um, okay. I guess I'll just, where is it? Oh, this is a recipe for disaster. I'm putting it in there. I have to push until it reaches the extruder. Oh, I assume it's, oh no, I can still, okay. I don't have a sense, okay. So um, an, another slight disappointment. Um, it's telling me to push it into the filament runout sensor until it reaches the extruder. I would imagine there could be something on screen that reads that sensor and tells me something is there, but it doesn't. It's just telling me to push until I can't push anymore, which, which is entirely valid, but Q1 Pro, Pro, Pro. So it gives a premium moniker, but that is not a premium experience. I'm just saying. Okay. Click the plus button to start heating and setting nozzle temp. Okay, I hit plus once and it goes to 223. Cool. 3D printed hardware, did it pass UL testing? Fantastic, fantastic question. And I don't know how to find out. Uh, on the back, on the back I've got CE, FCC, ROHS, PSE, uh, UKCA, check reach, and do not throw away. There is no, um, there's no UL on the, on the back label. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, waiting for the temperature to re, wait, okay, so that has the, so it's saying click the plus button, waiting for, Waiting the temperature, reach the setting value. Okay, it's there. I guess I click this button. 
Ensure the filament into the extruder. Click button for loading filament until filament comes out the nozzle. What? Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Let's see, do they include an alcohol pad or, or something to clean the, nope. They include thermal grease, a wrench, a nozzle cleaner. Okay. Uh, let's see, I wonder if I, um, it oh, that screen just said max 350. That's scary. So maybe it's okay. Uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go get some IPA. You know, sometimes printers come with an alcohol pad to clean it off, and um, yeah, this one did not, which is fine, I guess. Which is fine. Okay. Uh, load. Next. Please load the phone. Next. Okay, it's now loading the filament. Yeah, I didn't do that load procedure correctly. Um, I couldn't really tell what was going on. Arklin, no, not rough. Uh, retry. Uh, Jeff, sorry, you tell is a voluntary thing. Oh, it's voluntary. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that, Jeff. I, I thought UL was a requirement. I didn't know it was voluntary. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. If it's voluntary, then it's not a requirement for this machine to exist and to run. I apologize. Okay. We got filament completed. Look at that. It spit out some, some material right there. Okay. Uh, home, uh, file, let's see, 3D Benchy, castle slide coin catcher, sure. Four hours, I'm, oh, and bed leveling, okay. Printing with enclosure may cause high temperatures and softening the filament leading to clogging, so please open the top, confirm. We are taking, we are taking the hat off. Perfect. All right, we're, we're doing something here. We're chooching along. It's not beer resistant. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Looks like it's gonna level some stuff. Let me see if I can't get um, a box to put that camera on and maybe we can uh, get you a higher viewpoint. Would that work? I can use the styrofoam that it came with and get this camera slightly higher, maybe. There we go. That's not too shabby. Looks like it's heating the bed right now. It says chamber is 17C and it's not active. It does say that uh, the, the nozzle is 170C and it's not currently being heated. Must be doing some sort of uh, cleaning, I think, cleaning back there.
It looks like it heats the nozzle to a certain temperature and then starts scraping back and forth and then kills the heat to the nozzle, which I would imagine is uh, the cleaning procedure. Yep, yeah, that is the cleaning procedure. Lander Hulsteins, what printers do you like at the moment and would you recommend, Joel? Oh, just a second. Dang Panda with a tenner. That's a five and a five right there. Thanks, Dang Panda. To help get an adjustable tripod to help you get better angles. True. It's on my list. Bless your heart. So the printers that I would recommend. Uh, is it out of focus? Well, shoot. All right, hold on. Hold, please. I got an idea. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh yeah, here we go. I can use this. Got some filament, then I can maybe put this on top. There we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> We're a little. There we go. Apologies for getting you seasick, Ron. Gonna yeah, get one of those ear patches in the back, maybe. Hey, man, if everybody's got some to drink, it's uh, it's a great time to get out your beverage and have a sip. Bill the bongs, I can't get over how cheap, poor build quality that enclosure seems. Um, it is just a standard plastic enclosure. Um, I, I just, are you equating, are you equating poor build quality with it being plastic? Because in person, it seems like the plastic is built well. It's firm, it's nice, it's, it's well made. Um, so I need to know if you're equating poor build quality with plastic or if you're seeing uh, something that's wrong that I'm not seeing. It is leveling itself, absolutely. Oh, uh, Lander, thank you. So what printers are we gonna say? Sorry. Um, the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, I think is a great starter machine. And I like the P1S as, a, as an also a starter machine that's just a little bit more expensive. Uh, for the tinkering type, I really like what Prusa did with the Mark IV. Um, um, I have some, I'm trying to get some experience with the, the Neptune IV series and the Soval series, um, and obviously we'll evaluate this Chidi machine, uh, but, but yeah, machines like that. The Soval SPO6, SPO7 are, are great machines from what I've heard. Does one side seem higher? I mean, it's possible. I don't wanna get anybody seasick, so. Let me, let me, let me see what I can do. Okay. That's worse. Looks like it's making a line. Drawing some stuff. Why don't I, why don't I just get you guys right into there? Okay, it's, uh, it's going.
It's making a bottom layer. It's not looking too bad. Okay, okay, we're getting there. Does it have a webcam? Big Dog Tony, um, no. Wait, yes? Yes, it does. I see one right there. I wonder if we can get access to it. I bet if I connect, so I bet if I connect it up to the network, I could get access to that camera. Yep. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I saw it. The webcam actively watching that. I, I don't know. So I would have to connect to the network. I didn't do that. Um, yeah. You can get access to it from the fluid interface. There we go. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. So uh, what Jeff Sawyer is saying, if I do connect up to the network, then I do have access to the fluid interface and I'll have access to that webcam. Okay. So if it's fluid, it means it's, it's, uh, it's Clipper. Clipper? Should be. They call him Clipper. Clipper. Uh, this thing is noisy. Uh, it's not the quietest thing. Better than the first print off the Orange Storm Giga. Well, yes. Thankfully, they're sending parts and a new firmware. I, I just heard from my rep at Elegoo that the, that the team is putting together a new firmware for me because I did send them logs and I did send them leveling data. So they must have identified something that was derelict in my machine and I'm gonna get a new firmware and I'll be able to test that out. So that's good. It's gonna be interesting to see the speed of this machine once that first layer is done. First layer is looking quite glassy. I like it. How are we looking overhead? Oh, look at that. Look at that. isn't fluid, not updated anymore. Um, uh, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe Je Jeff in the chat will know. You just aged yourself to the theme song from Flipper. I sure did. What's the max speed? I don't know. How come no one reviews TiVo printers anymore? TiVo doesn't send them out anymore. What is the max speed? I'm unfamiliar with that. The MK4 and now this first layer kind of proves that the LiDAR from Bamboo was a bit of a gimmick. I'm still not entirely sold on the way Bamboo is doing the flow calibration. I understand what they're doing with their laser and how they're reading it. It's just, I'm, I haven't seen the data it provides. And I, you know, I do have X1 Plus on a couple of my Bamboo machines and it could be that X1 Plus allows me to see the LiDAR data. I just, I wanna see it before I really commit to it, you know? Lander, are they making the Flipper firmware more up-to-date since this one is two years old? Uh, I don't know. Um, I know uh, Nero 3D, I'm sorry, Canuck Creator. <laughs> Canuck Creator. I know he talked about, uh, he sent something, a post on X, talking about how it was older, antiquated firmware. And, uh, you know, I don't know for sure, but uh, he would know. All right, it's moving pretty quick. Ivan, don't, <laughs> hey, 3D Brainer, don't touch the heater, you'll be electrocuted. I've heard that. I've heard that. Isn't there a way to build a chamber heater so you're not exposing the user to potential mains voltage? There, there must be a way, right? Make it go faster. I don't know if I can. The acceleration, I'm unsure. 
I did put the link in the description. They may have posted it. That link wasn't active last night when I was trying to get information about this, and so it might be active now. It's moving quick. Mm. This might not be enough filament to finish the print. <laughs> Uh. 3D print tech design that looks like 250 to 300. That eh, could be. Wexter, what's up? What's up? Johnny Vate, max speed of the tool at is 600 millimeters per second. Okay. I missed the beginning of this print since I had to pick up the kid from school. No problem, Wilmar. We're printing, we're going along. What is it supposed to be printing? It's a castle slide coin catcher. Castle slide coin catcher. I'll bring it back here. Let me see if I can't bring that into view. I want you guys to see the stats and stuff. Uh, how about that? There we go. Get ready to have uh, fun replacing the filament when you get a run out. Science Sniper, what's up? What filament is that right now? It's the filament that's been included with it. Big Dog Tony, will we get more Prusa XL com uh, content? Yes, I actually have some. A really cool thing coming for the Prusa XL, it's called the Sumo Enclosure, and I'm gonna be building that pretty soon. Chris Goulart, is there enough filament for the print? There is not, absolutely not. It's gonna run on filament, it sure is. It absolutely is, and that's the joy of this, right? Run out sensor test in about 20 minutes, it's true. I mean, that's... That's all we got on there. Actually, let's bring it over here. So this is the setup and look at that. That's it. That's all we got. Overhead, we good? We're good. Okay. Bring back that. Sweet. Yeah, a four hour print with 20 grams of filament, you bet. Dang Panda, I've heard good things about the Sumo enclosure. So have I. It takes about, he said, just under three kilograms of material to print all the parts in the way that he wants to print them. Um, I'm going to be using Prusa Pet G. So when I built my Mark III S Plus farm, each printer came with a spool of Pet G. And I'm going to be using that orange Pet G just to keep the orange color theme. I thought about going blue Pet G and uh, for my other XL. And if I uh, if this goes well and the and the sumo enclosure is really cool, then what I might do, excuse me, is uh, print another, get another one, and print it and do the Hi-Fi Blue Pet G from Protopasta. Steam Dragon. By the way, Joel, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, uh, you was actually the third. Uh, that person that helped me get into printing. Oh, fantastic. I'm really happy I could do that. In fact, I can do, let's see, boom. There we go. Steam Dragon, thanks for that. I mean, it's just printing now. Anybody else got any questions? Here we go, look at this. I have some Polymaker Pet G Transparent Blue, and it's very nice. Uh, I agree, they make, some, they make some really, really good filaments. The transparent stuff is great. If the heater element is live, it wouldn't meet UK electrical regs being 240 volts over, over here. Wouldn't be able to sell it over here. It does have on the back, it does say uh, UKCA. I don't know what that means. Ryan H, is this a sponsored unboxing or did you buy it? Uh, it's not, it's not technically sponsored. So Chidi sent this machine to me for the purposes of just doing what I want with it. 
uh, they didn't pay to have it featured. And they didn't say that I had to do a live stream at a certain time. And so uh, from the, the technical side point, it's not a sponsored stream, but this machine was provided to me by Cheaty for free for the purposes of review and usage. That's just a lot of words. That's a lot, a lot of words. Here we go. UKCA is their version of the CE certification. It's sort of like the UL, but does not require the testing that UL does. Oh, okay. Is the Giga printing yet? It is not. It is not. Um, so for everybody that's here, we got a couple, like 500 and some odd people here. The Orange Storm Giga, after the stream, I sent log files and I sent leveling data off to Elegoo. And they took that and they've been crunching on that. And I just heard from my Elegoo rep today that they are sending the parts to fix it fast because they want me to get up and printing. Uh, to be honest, I want to get up and printing. And then they're going to be sending me new firmware. So my thinking is that they found something in the firmware that affected my machine and why it dove itself into the bed and, and murdered itself. And I'm guessing that new firmware is to keep it from doing that. That's the only thing I can think of. But until I get that firmware and I get the parts and I hear from the engineers, that's the assumption that I'm making. Da Finch, 3D printer, would you use the Cheaty for your print farm based on current experience? Um, there's a little bit of worry about the chamber heater just because on my print farm, it's not just me. Others, like my wife or my kids, sometimes run the prints for me or, or work on it. And if they're doing that, then there is a bit of a safety concern for that. And so if that's mitigated or taken care of, um, an enclosed machine that can print really fast, it's, that's not a bad idea. And I think if it's really easy to qualify a farm machine if it's just going to do PLA. But this is enclosed and it says the hot end temperature can go to 350 and it does have a chamber heater. So pet G and ABS are on the table. Child labor. Nice. Hey, they're my kids. I pay them. I give them money and they do chores. It's just one of the chores sometimes is uh, helping with some of the prints. Donald Sayers, you can remove the heater in the SSR easily. Well, that's good to know. I can't imagine having an actively heated chamber in a plastic enclosure. Okay, this is where it gets kind of weird. An actively heated chamber with a plastic enclosure. That doesn't make sense to me, especially with a moniker. Pro. Yeah. Is there anything for VOC filtration? Um, there is not. So in the back, there's an opening where the fan blows air out. There's no, uh, there's no filter on it. The chamber heater is not going to get hot enough to melt that enclosure. I understand that part. And I'm not saying it's going to, but when we talk about pro level machines with the pro moniker, I don't know. I, I don't associate heated build chamber with a plastic enclosure. That, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Actively heated chamber, plastic enclosure. It's going to be fine. Just mentally, that's not the two things that I associate together. I think that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I hope it's the camera that's rocking. You can see it. Because I'm on a spool of filament here. I wonder if I can. Well, that's more sturdy. I'll have to aim you up a little bit. There you go. That's a little bit more sturdy. Yeah, when, you, when you're running on an almost empty spool of material, you know, it kind of 
wibbles and wobbles a little bit. Uh, can you print PC? Uh, it's within the temperature range, so maybe. Is, it, is this also using proprietary nozzle? Um, I don't know. I don't have a spare nozzle to look at. So print quality so far is looking pretty good. Is this camera angle okay? Uh, I can I can go find a taller box or get you closer or something. I mean, everything's everything's on the table here. Get your get your tripod on a roller base. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That could be kind of fun. I could bring the overhead down more. Okay. We're gonna run out of filament soon. It's fine, okay, thank you. Let's see if I can get you uh, on the, the print quality there. There you go. It's not looking too bad. I am almost filament, out of filament. We gotta at least go until it uses all the filament, right? Can I print PA6 CF? Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, I, I, I don't know if it's a hardened nozzle, which would really impact its ability. No, no, see that's, let me go get a full spool of filament. How about that? I just have to go into the uh, the print farm, looking for boxes, you know. Here we go. Here we go. I've got two boxes, brand new boxes of material, and that will support the camera well. Look at that. Oh, it's gonna be good. Yeah, there we go. I think it's a little bit better. Still rocking. It is moving quick. It says by metal, hmm, by metal. By metal usually has to do with the ability of the machine to handle a certain temperature. I'm just keep my hand on the camera because it does wiggle a bit. Wilmar, would you recommend this printer with the current flaw of electrocution? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take the legs out just a bit more. How about that? That might help. Make a wider base, right? Let's see. Boom. There we go. That's not bad. Once the filament runs out though, that's where the, that's where we're gonna find out. Yeah, we're not that far away from it. Tripod, I saw you, saw you talk about people holding all your stuff for you. It made me giggle, that's funny. 
All right. Um, I'm thirsty. Raise them high. Slauncha. Yeah. Eric, what's your print speed right now? Um, it's not listing the speed. It's not listing the speed. Uh, if I connect it up to the network and look at fluid, it would tell me. But I just, I'm, I'm not going to connect it to the network right now. The print quality is looking fantastic. Oh. Oh, it's the end game, Tony. That's all. This is all we got left. This is it right here. All right, chooch on, little machine. Chooch on. I'm interested to see how the tangle sensor does from James. Oh, okay. Johnny Vate, what are you drinking, Joel? I'm drinking a, an Arizona Arnold Palmer diet. Arnold Palmer diet. Looks like, it looks like this. Looks like this. See, it says 99 cents, 99 cents. Yeah. This, I, I have a store that I go to that I get them for 79 cents. That's a deal right there. That's a deal. That's a deal. Ding Panda, how much is the machine again? Wilmar got it right on sale, 469. So Chidi is saying early birds, 469. And after that, 599. Kyle, uh, there's still enough time to weld filament and to the spool before it runs out. There is. There is. And I'm not going to do that because we're going to test the filament sensor. Aaron Liebeck, this is the best of the three videos I've watched on this printer today. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I purposefully didn't watch any other streams or videos on this machine because I wanted a really honest opinion of the experience with it without it being influenced by others. And hopefully I was able to bring that to you. Um, I did have some disappointed dad moments, but you know, overall we got there. But the print quality is exquisite. Wow. Ding Panda, so it's competing with the P1 series. You know, that's accurate. That's accurate. Yeah, because it is enclosed. It's 250, the back says 240 by 240 by 240. And I know the P1 series is 256, 256, 256, but the, the pill plate says 250, 250 right up front. So, I mean, it's close enough. That's a good observation though, competing with the P1 series. Yeah. Is the filament sensor on on my XCF? You have to activate it. I don't know. Um, printing speed. I just want you to dial in a number. Okay. That's weird. Um, we're going to find out if it's on, aren't we? James Bricknell, I missed the beginning, but how do you feel about the, that still holder? Do you mean spool holder? I hate it. Let's see. Uh, is it quieter than the bamboo? Mm, I'd say it's about equal. I'd say it's about equal. Now, the door is open and the hat is off, so I don't have an accurate representation of the sound with all of that enclosed, but it's comparable to the bamboo. So in my print farm room where I went, um, I've got bamboos, I've got my Mark 3S pluses, and I've got my XLs. And when the bamboos are printing, I, the XL sounds silent. Like the XLs with that update, the preset XLs print really, really quiet. But when the bamboo machines are on, I can stand in front of the XL and I can't hear it, but I can hear the bamboo machines. Seems like you have to activate it. Uh-oh. 
Well, that's unfortunate. I guess we will find out. Isn't it due to the fans? Yes. It is, yeah, the fan, it's the fan noise. And on the bamboos, it's the fan noise. They have the uh, active noise reduction for the motor movements, but it's the fans. Uh, you can still hear some of it, though, and uh, it's the fans. So in here, you can hear some of the motors going. It's not the quietest thing in the world, but it's the fans. Uh, is it cheaty or cutie or queedy? I've heard all three. Tyler, it is cheaty. Cheaty. The Q is like a, a CH, cheaty. That's what I've heard, cheaty. Mew, have you thought about doing the knock to a fan mods? I have thought about that. I have thought about that. But again, my machines are in a room dedicated to 3D printing, and eventually I'm going to have sound foam and insulation. So. I won't be able to hear it regardless. Like if the print farm is loud, it should be loud. It's a print farm. But outside the print farm, you shouldn't be able to hear it. Uh, Kyle does have an, uh, an aux blower fan. It does. There is a fan in the back, just blowing out. Yeah. Aaron F. Geared, Noctua, less sound, less blow. That is 100% accurate. If you're going to move air, you're going to make noise. If you're going to move a lot of air, you're going to make a lot of noise. And uh, you can make less noise when moving a lot of air, but then the thing that moves the air has to be much, much larger. Like if you have a ceiling fan that's 10 feet wide, it'll move a lot of air, but that's because it's so large. If you have a small thing moving air, you got to spin it really fast, and that's where that noise comes from. Is the K1 Max louder than the P1 or X1C? That's, uh, I don't remember. I haven't run the K1 Max in a while. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. It's sitting right over there, and I accidentally broke the USB. Apologies. But uh, I don't remember if it's loud. I don't think it's too loud. Filament should have been gone by now. Let's check. No, we got, got about this much. About this much. Don't worry, I'm keeping track. I'm not gonna let you guys down. So it's silent. What's silent? This machine is not silent. This machine is, um, I wouldn't classify it as loud too. That's the problem. Like it's a 3D printer, it's not like, loud it just it sounds like it's doing stuff like if i put the hat on yeah we, with the door closed tell you what we're just going to do a little bit of an experiment here just for the sake of sound okay that's not terrible like i can tell a machine is doing something and the door closed and the hat on really do reduce some of the fan noise and you can still hear the higher pitched motor noises but it's really not that bad all things considered like it is a machine there's no there's no handle it just look at this there's no handle ah there we go got it i was worried No handle. Elmas Guzman, the USB port to the K1 is just a short extension, a simple replacement. No, no, no. Like the USB stick. I accidentally bumped it. <laughs> the, the stick. The USB stick tacoed. Yeah. James Bricknell, that's a great way to describe it. It's not loud, it's just doing something. <laughs> It makes a lot of sense though. Like loud has a certain connotation to it. Like you're like, whoa, that's loud. But if it's just 
a general noise that is being made because something is doing something. I don't know. I wouldn't qualify this as loud. It's just it it makes some noise. Richard McLean, I prefer the sounds. It's the quiet that makes me nervous. <laughs> Lisa, UK girl, no. Orange Storm Giga did not give up on, uh, uh, let's see, I, I talked about this earlier. So um, I sent off log files and, and the leveling data to Elegoo for the Orange Storm Giga. They took that and they have since shipped new parts for me to fix it, but also the development team is putting together a new firmware and I'm gonna install that. So I think what I did may have found a problem in the firmware and they fixed it. That's the only thing that I can really glean from that, but I'll know more once, once things are sent. Loud implies you feel like you have to talk over it. You know, if, 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 to, if I was here with a friend, like if I was right here with a friend and we're right near this machine, I could be talking at a normal volume and I think we could have a conversation. Again, a thing is doing a thing. So there is noise, but it's not loud. It's so, it's so personal preference. It's so difficult. Peter, I never understand how they can think to put all of these advanced printing functions in these things and then forget simple things like a door handle or a decent spool holder in a convenient place. Yeah, that's, uh, that's engineering 101, right? You, you take care of the hard stuff and then the simple stuff you forget. It's like when, uh, it's like, like a brain surgeon just having a Snickers bar for lunch. <laughs> it's like, come on. Bolt the robot, probably quieter with the door closed. It is. Lander, how are you liking this printer so far with the, film, with the li very limited experience you, you have with it? I think there were a few shortcomings and disappointed dad moments that I had with the machine early on. But again, a pre-sliced file is printing beautifully. And so there are some drawbacks to the machine just from what we've talked about, but, but the print quality is fantastic. And so if I can reproduce that print quality with a slicer and my own models, then, I mean, we've really got something here. Uh, Mr. T-Bone SF, can you print PLA with the door closed and top on for a long time or will it get too hot? It really depends on your PLA material. Some PLAs have a higher glass transition temperature and they won't get too soft. Others sometimes just melt when you breathe on them. And so it really depends on your external atmospheric conditions and whether or not the PLA can just sustain it. So with the hat on right now, it's telling me the chamber is 27C. When I was printing with the hat off, the chamber was like 18 to 19C. So it is holding in some heat. Uh, it is warm right here. There is heat escaping. Yeah. What would be three drawbacks to the machine? Uh, I, I don't like the spool holder. I really don't. Um, and that's a personal preference. So it's hard to say it's a drawback. Uh, I think there's some software annoyances and um, I don't, I'm not a fan of how they did the build plate insertion and lining up. Really, my gripes, well, this is a live stream and I do have to talk about the moments that I find problems. All in all, it's been a decent experience with this machine. Like, it's been, it's been decent. Oh. We are out of filament. We are out of filament. So now we see if it pauses. Now remember, when we turned on the machine, it very specifically said, push the filament past the filament sensor, which in my eyes would mean at the get-go, it's mentioning a filament sensor, so it should be activated. Boginga the Dolphin King, have you tried remote print functionality? No, I have not. It's 
spool holder tends to bend a bit with a spool on it can actually drop the spool. Well, that's not good. Ooh, a little warm in there. A little toasty. The filament sensor is at the back of the machine. It is not active by default. All right. Well, I th hold on. I can see the filament up here. The filament sensor apparently wasn't turned on by default and Jeff Sawyer confirmed that. Let me get a roll of filament to keep it going because the model's looking great and I think it deserves to finish. So let me, um, let me go get a spool of filament, like a, like a good spool, like a, like a good spool of filament. I'll get some, I'll get some black filament. Yeah, I'll just, I'll get some, get some black filament. Here we go. I actually got something really nice here. So what I've got is something from Elegoo and it's their Rapid PLA Plus. Elegoo, Rapid, I'll tell you what. Elegoo, Rapid PLA Plus, that one right there. I know they have it on sale all the time. Caught it. <laughs> it's a good filament. Like it prints, it prints great. So now let's load it in the cattywampus spool holder. Okay. And let's wrap that around. So I'm going to have to do some, some trickery here. Like an adult size spool. Yeah. An adult. Okay, I've met up with it. Okay, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Okay, so it keeps the bed hot when it's paused, but it doesn't heat the extruder. Okay. Interesting. So as it's printing, I'm just going to follow that filament in. Okay, we're just going to going to keep following it. <laughs> okay. I can see it there. What are the chances of this working? Pause and use the poop bucket. Uh, I thought about that. Here, I got, I got an idea. I got an idea. So, okay. So, ugh. so let's see if I can push that down. There we go. There we go. And then I can uh, load. No, replace filament. Okay. Next, heating up. Please cut the filament and click the next button. Okay. Okay. So, I'm doing a little filament swappy here. Let me get to the the screen so it looks like that. We're heating up. Filament unloading. Okay, it's pulling it down. What? It said filament unloading and it just extruded it.
Okay. Okay, I got that loaded. We're just gonna be pooping out a bunch of stuff. Are we pulling from the spool? We are pulling from the spool. Where's it unloading it to? Okay, uh, I think we're good. There's a big pile of filament in that thing. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, there we go. It did not go into the poop bucket, which I put it in the poop bucket. And this is uh, that Elegoo material that I was talking about, which prints really well. I really like it. And when I see it on sale, I try to pick it up. <sighs> Yeah, it's not an unload. It is a purge. Poop, need a poop knife. That's right. Where is, where is Barnacles? Have you tried using the Cheaty Link app yet? I have not. I have not. Well, that was cool. Let's see. Can you see it? Yeah, look at that. I like that overhead shot. Joel's new name, pulling from the spool. We're home free, baby. Yeah, yeah, look at that go. Well, I'll tell you what. So unfortunately, I'm on a bit of a limited time schedule today. So we're gonna have to call it at the stream. I went a little bit over my two o'clock end time. Um, but I think we found out a lot of cool things. We got this set up. We talked about the spool holder. We talked about the build plate. We mentioned mains voltage in the chamber heater. Um, we talked about the filament sensor and how it's not enabled by default. And then we tried to cheat it like the old days. And then we just did an unload, which is actually a purge. It works out, but, uh, but this, this was fun. Uh, I'm really happy that I got to get this out and get my own opinions on this before watching the plethora of videos and streams that are out this, that are out there on this. Um, I'm really curious to see if people thought the same thing as me. Maybe they did. I don't know. Uh, but listen, thanks for joining me along on this stream. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for letting me test not one, not two, but three. Three different cameras and a picture in picture to boot. That's fun. Oh, you know what I can do? Did I do it? Oh, um, auto? That. One. Two? <laughs> okay. This is gonna be uh, this is gonna be too much. Well, listen, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in, and print all of the wonderful things. Um, I hope you have a rad day. And once this finishes, I will get a picture and post it to various social networks so we can see it. Um, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. High five.